Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Beautiful day today, and we have an interesting car to diagnose. No, it's not this one. This uh, 2015 Kia blew its engine up at 40,000 miles. That's a Kia thing. Dealer replaced it, it had some parasitic draw. Can't reproduce it, so not worried about this one today. This thing, 2007 Mazda 6 station wagon, it's the V6. The owner reached out to me. He said last year, I think this kid was driving it, and you know, went to work, started up. The transmission's in limp mode. Like, it only has gears three, reverse, and park. Okay, so it can go forwards and forward and backwards. It's not quite a beached whale, but it's in limp mode. He said he took it to at least one or two shops. It was at a transmission shop for, this car's been down for almost a year. They tried everything. There's, he said there's no code stored in the TCM. You can talk to the TCM. They tried another TCM. Didn't do anything. They tried an engine computer. Didn't do anything. So he brought it here from three hours away, towed it on a trailer. So here it is. Apparently he's got a dead battery. He said he charged it up before he left, but I have my doubts. Let's, uh, let's see if it cranks over. Nope. <laughs> oh boy. Um, one request, and I'm sure a lot of shop owners would agree with me, is if you're going to bring a car over, at least make sure it has like half a tank of gas and a battery that holds a charge. There's all these little things. It takes time to, you know, jumpstart a car, go to the gas station, fill up. And if you're willing to pay for that, okay. But if you're bringing here just for a diagnosis, at least make sure those basics are there. So let's get this thing, uh, jump pack on this thing, get a scanner hooked up, see what codes are stored, go from there. I mean, it looks like we got a uh, engine control module on the passenger seat. Owner said that didn't change anything. It's still in limp mode. So place your bets now. Got my Audu jump pack hooked up. Let's just take a quick peek, make sure it has some engine oil in it. Yeah, it's, it's got some oil in it. Cars that have been sitting for a while, you kind of want to check the basics before <laughs> firing it up and blowing anything up. Let's see it positive, negative. All right, that clicked. Ugh. Apparently it's got some uh, sweet aftermarket exhaust. Yeah, that sounds mean. Woo! Let's scan it for codes. So we're only at 88,000 miles, pretty low mileage for 2007. Check engine lights on. So let's see what that's all about. Auto ID the car. And we only have six modules. That's Pretty nice. So let's do a smart scan, see what pops up. All right, so we got one code in the RCM, battery voltage low, okay, obviously. PCM, P0328, knock sensor one, circuit high input. Well, that's not really the customer complaint. This complaint's the transmission stuck in limp mode. So let's take it for a spin. There's nothing stored in the TCM. We could look at the live data. You know, make sure we can talk to it. Gear select position three. He said it jerks pretty hard when you shift into gear. Boom. <laughs> and it just shows three. So I think it is stuck in third gear.
yep, it's just in third gear, just like the customer said. Let's see, can we back up? Yep. Definitely just in third gear. And it seems like all the shift solenoids are disabled. They all have zero amps. See transmission D range switch off. There's R range. Ow. Okay, transmission range R. P. Man, that is a harsh shift. <laughs> If you come over here, you see our upshift switch. Sorry, the glare is a little harsh today. There's downshift switch. Everything works. No fault codes. Charging at 14.4. Where would you go from here? I think we have to do some research. I've never seen a transmission in limp mode with absolutely no trouble code set. Very strange. I mean, it's it's forced in the limp mode for some reason. What is the logic here? Let's jump online and see if we can dig something up. Let's just look at the PCM real quick. <clears throat> so that knock sensor code apparently is a hard fault. It's set right away. Just want to see if uh, ice stop. I have no idea what ice stop is. Read fault code. And that's it. P0328. So that's the only thing I see wrong with this car other than transmission being in limp mode. Place your bets now. All right, doing some research on all data. Um, I can't find any information on what would cause the car to go into limp mode in the transmission side. No TSBs. Um, we can look up the P0328. I mean, that's, yeah, just the knock sensor code. Okay. Um... So let's think outside the box. Is it possible that a knock sensor code would put the transmission into limp mode and the TCM not set any codes? I've never seen this before, but I guess anything's possible. Let's do a quick Google search on this issue. See if anyone out there has had the same problem. Hopefully we'll find something interesting. All right, so the uh, art of Google searching, you wanna type in some keywords. Mazda 6, third gear, knock sensor. Are those related at all? <laughs> knock sensor transmission problem, help. Well, that's the first hit. Let's see what comes up. Yep, three liter V6, ASIN transmission, exhibiting several s symptoms. CL's on, and the code shows P0328 knock sensor, one high circuit. Yep, that's us. I've tried clearing this code, and as soon as I start the engine, throws a code again. Seals back on. Whenever I put the car in reverse, the engine moves so much that a hard clunk can be heard felt. Yep. Strangely, it's not as much of a problem going in the drive. I was thinking that this may be a motor mount problem. Da, 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 da. When I put the car in a drive, it automatically defaults to third gear. That's exactly what's going on. I cannot force it into manual mode and subsequently into first or second. The real question is, how can all of these things be related? Motor mounts causing enough vibration. Knock sensor, turn putting car in limp mode. Transmission problem. Um, separate issues or not. Any techs out there? Give me any tips. Well, I guess no one replied. Safe mode or limp mode will cause the train shifting problems. Now the question is, can a knock sensor connection problem cause the car to go into limp mode? So far, most people post say the car will only go into limp mode when the alternator is bad. <laughs> if anyone else has similar experiences, that would be helpful. Fixed. Replacing the knock sensor fixed the problem. Apparently, all of the ominous symptoms were caused by limp mode in the computer. I had to 
Remove the upper intake manifold to get to the knock sensor connector. So while I was at it, change the spark plugs. Da, 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 da. So far, it seemed to work well. That's it. I think this car is as good as fixed. Needs a knock sensor and a fresh battery. Seriously? Wow. And th this thing was at a transmission shop for how many months? Um, information is out there, people. You don't need all data, really. <laughs> you just need it, the internet. Um, and... I mean, the car is saying, that's the only problem that we see is this knock sensor code. Transmission's in limp mode. And this guy says, yeah, it was a bad knock sensor. So, crazy stuff. I'm going to see if I can get one. Um, find, we'll find the connector. Make sure there are no wiring issues, obviously. Um, I think the customer will be pretty happy about this. All right, so here we have the OEM part number for the knock sensor. It's only less than 70 bucks. Only half an hour to replace it. Well, that's that would be really nice for the customer. You don't have to tear apart like the lower intake manifold or anything. Um, there's also this how to inspect it. Two wire connector. Specification 4.87 mega ohms. So we can measure the resistance of this knock sensor. This kind of PCM connector and inspect the following circuit. Um, so yeah, let's let's find it. See if we can get one. There's the part number. I'll call the dealer up. Uh, OEM, preferably, and go from there. All right. So knock sensor is on this side of the engine block, and I see the wire and the connector right there. So we've got the battery out of the way. It needs a new one of those. And let's see here. Wait. Are you kidding me? It's unplugged? Holy crap! <laughs> well, where's the other end of the plug? That's a problem. Oh, let me get in there with a mirror. See if I can locate the uh, other side of that connector. That would be really good news for the customer. Well, I'm measuring the resistance of the sensor. It's 35 mega ohms. The spec is like 4.7. So I don't know the history of the car. Perhaps that code came up and they just unplugged the knock sensor. I don't know. So I guess it still needs one. We can try to plug it in, see if the code comes right back. I assume it will because this resistance is out of spec. But still, this is a pretty, you know, pretty good outcome. All right, I got a fresh battery in here. Let's see. If we get the same code right back. All right, let's fire it up. Boom, check engine light came right back in the PCM. There it is. So we confirmed bad knock sensor. I uh, got one coming. So once we pop that in, this car should be as good as new. Well, here she is. Made in Mexico. So pretty easy to get to. Just to reach her on move. That's right, right down here. Now we just gotta wait for parts. Pop that in, should be in good shape. Alrighty, parts guy showed up. We got a brand new inner motor, standard motor products, made in Taiwan knock sensor. Shout out to Fisher's Auto Parts, they are great at speedy delivery. Customer's gonna pick this car up in less than an hour. We got 4.75 mega ohms, that's good reading. Let's pop this sucker in, new battery. Take the car for a test drive. All right, we've got a green tree. Place your bets now. 
No check engine light yet. <laughs> There's first gear, people. That's it, this car's fixed. All right, let's take it for a rip. Let's see how the Mazda 6 wagon drives. All right, let's see how this baby accelerates. That's it, like I said, good as new. <laughs> Unbelievable. This car is down for almost a year for a silly knock sensor. Oh man. And what's the what's the lesson of the day? Um, fix what's broken. It could be interrelated. This reminds me of the Volvo station wagon where an ABS problem was causing transmission issues. Like transmission shifting issues. It, it wouldn't accelerate because it thought the wheel was slipping. So silly stuff like that. Pay attention to the warning lights and all the trouble codes in the car. That's why you gotta do the full health report. Don't go down that rabbit hole. Just because your transmission has a problem doesn't mean it's not caused by something else and you know, it's an input problem. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next one, bye-bye.